Even so, pouched killers were to be usurped as dominant predators of the South. The extinction of most was to remove marsupials from the list of contenders for the predator's throne. And of the other candidates, the next to make a bid for the crown was, of all things, a bird. This new hunter-killer evolved from small ground-dwelling birds, like the modern Seriema. Its forebears, the Thunderbirds, standing three meters at the shoulder, were fast and awesome killers, running down their prey. They soon came to dominate as pursuit predators. Such creatures would probably be roaming the pampas today, were South America still a separate continent. But geological forces were to take a hand. With the appearance of the Panama land bridge, the thunderbirds and marsupial hunters were overrun by new breeds of predator, mammals, magnifying and expanding their range down into South America. So in time, the thunderbirds too were to fall into oblivion. But in the north, the contest among the survivors of the dinosaurs' extinction continued. In Asia and America, the crocodiles, reptilian heirs apparent to the predatory dinosaurs, came out of the water to stalk the land. They were to evolve long-legged forms with hooves. Terrifying, fast-running beasts, they briefly threatened to evolve a new dynasty of ruling reptiles in the fashion of their ancestors. But they too were to go extinct reason. The placental mammals, the adaptable mammals as hunters, ousted all the other contenders in time. Yet competition existed among the placental mammals themselves, but a little vegetarian was to be the next challenger. It was to found a new lineage, the condyla, which at first may have looked something like the modern hyrax, a rabbit-like leaf-eater, but one with hooves. But some condylarths were to break the mold. The forests of North America, Africa and Eurasia were changing into savannah and prairie grasslands. New habitats for mammals to exploit. The small root eaters evolved into larger forms. Their five-toed feet became long, slender legs with hooves. So it's not surprising, perhaps, that the first mammal predators arose from the hooved vegetarians themselves. And there were some fearsome forms. Mesonyx was as racy a predator as anything that was to evolve in the next 40 million years. Today, some species of deer are reminiscent of those ancient animals, sporting canines adapted as small tusks. Even a vegetarian's teeth can become weapons. But back in time, its hooved relatives were assuming even more bizarre forms. Giant wolf sheep with a mouthful of teeth that could rip, but not teeth that could cut or slice meat, a dental omission that was to prove their undoing. But before their extinction as predators, one lineage of condyloths escaped the new generation of carnivores that held sway on land by entering the water. There they survived and prospered, evolving fantastically till the present day.
So after that new dawn of time at the death of the dinosaurs, all the other then predators were to tumble to extinction. All except one, Simolestes, small and mouse-like, had the potential to found the ultimate dynasty of killers. Today's elephant shrew might be something like Simolestes, scuttling around on the ground, in the dark, a small, inconspicuous insect eater. Who could possibly believe that such an animal had the secret weapon that would make it the precursor of all today's true carnivores? The shrew-like hunters pursued their climb to power by going up into the trees. The modern tree shrew gives an insight to those ancient animals. Now not only an insect eater, but having broadened its diet to eggs, lizards, a bit of everything. But basically, a hunter. So what was the ancient shrews? secret weapon. It lay buried in little Simolestes' teeth. In a very real sense, the teeth define the animal. At the back of Simolestes' jaw, its cheek teeth had evolved to cut, top and bottom teeth slicing against each other like the blades of a pair of scissors. The start of the carnassial shear. For flesh eaters, it was to be a design breakthrough. But a breakthrough that two separate groups, both descendants of Simolestes, were to exploit differently. One group, the Myacids, were at first small, the other later large. One lived in the trees, the other took to the ground. The Creodonts adapted the carnassial shear to seeming perfection. Maybe these modern forest hogs are something like those ancient Creodonts. For 20 million years, they hunted, killed, and sliced flesh in a variety of extraordinary body forms, some truly enormous. But the Creodon's teeth contained the seeds of their demise. Up in the trees, the Myacid's teeth were subtly different. But first, the Creodon's. Where did their teeth go wrong? Right at the back of the jaw, those impressive carnassials, scissor teeth, Perfect for cutting flesh, but not for much else. No good for fruit, seeds, or insects. By contrast, the myacids kept their options open. At the middle of their jaws, the same carnassial shear for meat. But behind, they also had grinding teeth. The myacids could eat meat and chewy solids as well. They had versatility. So here at last are the true carnivores. The myacids were small tree dwellers living in lush forests. Some probably looked and lived much like this Tyra, actually a tropical American member of the weasel family. The Tyra is an omnivore, and like many members of its branch of the carnivores, has a sweet tooth for fruit. The spotted linsang, in contrast, adheres more strictly to a diet of flesh, gleaning the branches for rodents, birds and insects. The banded linsang, another nocturnal predator. Semi-retractile claws arming it for the hunt. These members of the modern Viverid family probably still live and behave like those ancient myacids, the first carnivores. The 
the small-toothed palm civet, another viverid, has a particular taste for fruit.